In Revenge of the Sith, we saw Plo Koon get shot down by his clone troopers during a mission above the planet Kato Nemoidia. But what if Anakin Skywalker was dispatched to help Plo during the battle? How would things have played out differently? Let's jump into the story right now. The Jedi Council was in session to discuss a variety of topics that needed to be addressed. In the past handful of days, Count Dooku was killed by Anakin, and now Chancellor Palpatine had assigned Anakin to be his personal representative on the Jedi Council. The members of the Council were spread thin from battles in this long war, and now they had to discuss what to do with Anakin. And after some discussion, a consensus was reached. Anakin would be allowed on the seat on the Council, but he would not be made a Jedi Master. And along with being on the Council, the members also wanted Anakin to spy on the Chancellor. Obi-Wan spoke up though, saying Anakin would not take this assignment without resentment towards the Council. This was not a good idea for someone like him. Mace Windu said that he has faith in the boy, and the Council must trust him to do what is right. Obi-Wan nodded, but then Plo Koon spoke up. Plo Koon did not often speak up, but when he did, everyone listened. And he said that instead of putting Anakin closer to the Chancellor, Anakin should be taken away. Plo said that Anakin would not be on the Council's side in this. He would see it as a betrayal to a friend, especially after what happened with Ahsoka. And the Council could feel Plo's mood turn more sad as he mentioned Ahsoka, but Plo continued on, saying that he could use the help with assistance on Kato Nemoidia, especially through the air, and Anakin would be the perfect help. This was a crucial Separatist planet, and the Chancellor doesn't have his representative if Anakin comes along. The Council pondered over it, and eventually Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Seizei Tin said that they agreed. Then, the rest of the Council joined in, coming to the same consensus. Anakin would be granted a Council seat, and be sent to Kato Nemoidia. And soon, Anakin entered the Council Chambers. He was angry at not being made a Master, but he accepted the mission begrudgingly. And as Anakin was preparing his troops at the Republic Hangar on Coruscant, Obi-Wan came to say goodbye. The two of them, former Master and Apprentice, shared a nice moment where Anakin was thankful for Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan said that he will be made a Jedi Master in no time, telling Anakin he was one of the greatest Jedi in the Order. The two shared another nice moment, and then Anakin took off into another secluded area. He had two other people to speak with. First, Anakin spoke with Chancellor Palpatine. The Chancellor was a blue hologram here, and he told Anakin that he wanted him to stay here, be his representative on the Council, on Coruscant. But Anakin assured Palpatine that he could still sit in on the meetings from a different planet, and thanked the Chancellor for the opportunity before saying goodbye. Anakin then spoke to Padme and apologized. He was off to fight once again. But both Padme and Anakin silently knew that this was best for Anakin. He'd been distracted, distant, and sad after the nightmares of Padme dying. Getting back into the final battles of the war would keep his mind off the dreams, at least for now. And Anakin took off into hyperspace. Meanwhile, Palpatine sat in his office rather frustrated with Anakin and the Jedi. These were the final days of his grand plan. Anakin was going to be his new apprentice. But now he was off-world, and the Council did not trust Palpatine. It was only a matter of time until they came to arrest or kill him. And Palpatine knew the war would last only as long as Grievous was alive. So now Palpatine was relying on the droid general to survive until Anakin returned. And Anakin and the 501st emerged above Cato Nemoidia and made their way down to the planet. Before long, Anakin and his men found Plo in a Republic hideout, planning the next stage of their attack. The planet was nearly back in Republic hands, just one more assault and this battle would be won, especially with Anakin here. Plo greeted Anakin warmly, and he told Anakin that he was happy Ahsoka was still with them, fighting against Maul on Mandalore. Anakin thought about Ahsoka, wondering how that mission was going, then centered himself back to the here and now. Plo briefed Anakin on the attack strategy, and said Anakin would lead the clones in the air not allowing Separatist reinforcements to arrive, while Plo handles the ground assault with his men. The two Jedi Generals spent a while long longer discussing the plans. With Anakin here, the Separatists would fall quickly. Once the clones were ready, the battle for Kato Nemoidia began. Anakin started the assault in the air, flying his starship through the sky with his 501st pilot by his side. 
this forced the Separatists to focus on the air assault, leaving an opening for Plo Koon and his clone legion to ambush the Separatists on the ground. The battle was tough, but the Republic had the Separatists retreating as night came. With the first part of the assault over, Anakin and Plo let their men recover through the night. Anakin and Plo ended up alone at a fire, discussing what would happen tomorrow. They would finalize the assault, and the planet would be in Republic hands, once and for all. Since Ahsoka left from the Order, Anakin and Plo had not really had much time together. Plo understood how broken Anakin must have been when she left, and he wanted to help the young Jedi. The two sat at the fire, and Anakin offered to keep first watch, but Plo said that Anakin needed the rest. It had been a stressful few days for him, and Anakin thought to himself, he has no idea. But clearly, Plo had some idea, sensing that something was going on, and Plo decided to ask Anakin what was wrong. Clearly something more than just not being a master was at play here. Anakin prodded at the fire, and eventually admitted that he does not sleep well anymore. Every time he sleeps, he has dreams, nightmares, and they were about the people close to him dying. Anakin, of course, did not reveal that these dreams were about Padme, but Plo knew one thing for certain about Anakin. His strong heart for those close to him was his greatest feature, but it could also be his downfall. And Plo offered Anakin the greatest advice that Anakin had heard about this so far. He simply told Anakin that once they returned to Coruscant, once the war was over, he and the other Jedi would work with Anakin to prevent these dreams from coming true. Anakin told Plo about what Yoda said, about how he told Anakin that death is natural, and that Anakin must learn to let go. Anakin told Plo that that is simply something he could not do, and then Anakin accidentally slipped up, saying he would do anything to protect Padme. There was a long moment of silence after Anakin said Padme's name, and Plo, as calm and understanding as ever, asked Anakin if he was the father of Padme's child. Senator Amidala was friends with a lot of Jedi, and many of them had learned that she was pregnant, including Plo, and now he was putting it all together. Anakin said yes, that he was the father, and that his nightmares were about her dying in childbirth. Plo put his hand on Anakin's shoulder, telling him that the dark side of the Force has infected the galaxy during this war. The Jedi Council feels it, and Plo told Anakin that darkness is infecting him as well, that the loss of Ahsoka and others close to him in this war have put fear in his heart, and now the dark side is calling to him. Anakin knew that Plo was right. He'd felt this darkness for a long time, growing around him. And then Plo told Anakin that what makes a Jedi strong is not the ability to never feel fear or never feel emotions, but rather how a Jedi handles those emotions. Plo said the best way to keep Padme safe, and to keep those close to him safe, is to do what is right, rather than what seems to be the easy path. The two talked a bit more about Anakin not giving in to these dreams and staying in the light before Anakin thanked Plo and they took turns keeping watch. When morning came, the two Jedi generals were preparing their troops for the final assault when a political advisor of Cato Nemoidia was brought into the camp by Commander Oppo. Oppo told Anakin and Plo that this Nemoidian had come to the Republic camp with crucial information about the Separatist leaders and General Grievous. The two Jedi went to a room alone with the Nemoidian, who introduced herself as Rug Quornum. She said that the Separatist control on this planet has been brutal. The people are hungry and scared, but if they speak out, they will be arrested. But the people recognized that the Republic was going to take back over, and they would fight with the Republic. And then, Rug said that Newt Gunray, Separatist leader, was on Utapau with other leaders and General Grievous. Plo asked how she knew this, and she said that she and others frustrated with the Separatists infiltrated a meeting between Newt Gunray and those close to him here on his home planet. Rug said that she took a great risk and stole the recording of this meeting. She played the recording and sure enough, Gunray said that they were on Utapau. Plo quickly called the Jedi Council into an urgent meeting and presented this recording to the Council. It was clear proof of where Grievous and the Separatists were, so the Council decided to dispatch two Jedi Council members, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Mace Windu to Utapau. And so Kenobi and Windu took off for Utapau to eliminate General Grievous, while Plo and Anakin jumped back into their final assault on Kato Nemoidia. 
In the late evening, a new council session was called in for crucial updates. Windu and Kenobi were still on Utapau, and they informed the council that Grievous had been destroyed for good. Anakin and Plo said that Kato Nemoidia was under Republic control officially. Yoda said Kashyyyk was nearly won by the Republic. Around the galaxy, Jedi and clones were winning the war, and Windu told Anakin to report this good news to Chancellor Palpatine. Palpatine sat in his office, debating between different plans. Time was running low, and he received a transmission from Anakin. Anakin began to inform Palpatine of everything going on. Grievous was destroyed. Utapau, Kato Nemoidia, and Kashyyyk were back in Republic hands. The war could end soon. Palpatine frowned and simply asked Anakin if he was sure about this. He asked Anakin if he knew the Jedi's true intentions. Anakin said that he didn't understand, and Palpatine began explaining to Anakin that the Jedi are going to try and take over this Republic. Palpatine did not have nearly as much leverage in this conversation as he'd originally hoped. If Anakin would have just stayed on Coruscant, he could have manipulated him further, and it was clear to Palpatine that Anakin would not be buying into this. So Palpatine simply said that soon, Anakin will have to pick a side. Palpatine ended the call and prepared for the next step, Order 66. Anakin was concerned for what was going on with Palpatine and was determined to find out soon once he got back to Coruscant, but first, the two of them, Plo and Anakin, were in the air in their starfighters doing a final fly over the capital city with a handful of clone fighters with them. And on Coruscant, Palpatine sent an executive order to all of the clones. Execute Order 66. Palpatine would go with the clones to the temple, kill the masters, and frame them for assassination attempts. With Windu, Yoda, Plo, and Kenobi off-world, the temple would fall, and Anakin would either join the clones or die. On Kato Nemoidia, Anakin flew through the air next to Plo when he felt a shift in the force. Something was wrong. Anakin looked out of the window of his starfighter, and without thinking at all, he watched the clone fighters drop back into attack position. In a split-second decision, Anakin jerked his fighter to the left, slamming into Plo Koon and sending him crashing towards a platform on the side of a mountain. And right as Anakin slammed into Plo, blasts from the clone's fighters whizzed past his ship and instead hit parts of Anakin's fighter. Both Plo and Anakin didn't understand what was going on, but Anakin knew that he had to save Plo, and now they were under attack. Luckily, Plo and Anakin were two of the most skilled pilots in the Jedi Order, and the two of them were able to guide their crashing starfighters directly onto the platform of the mountain. Plo realized that if Anakin did not run into him, he would have been obliterated by the clones. They crashed down onto it and ejected at the same time, igniting their lightsabers as they landed. In battle position now, the two Jedi deflected blasts from their clone fighters right back into them, sending the clones crashing into the side of the mountain. But now the two of them were stuck, stranded on an isolated mountain, with nothing but open air surrounding them. They would need a plan. And across the galaxy, countless Jedi fell to their own men. Thousands of Jedi blinked out within minutes, with no hesitation from the clones. It all made no sense. But just like that, the Jedi Order was reduced to almost nothing. And on Coruscant, clone troopers stormed the temple, led by none other than Darth Sidious. Red lightsaber ignited, cutting through Jedi Masters Kit Fisto, Aegon Kolar, Sazie Tin, and many others while the clones handled the rest. In no time, the Jedi Temple fell. And back on Cato Nemoidia, Plo and Anakin were hiding in inside of a small cave on the platform when they came up with an idea. They could reach out through the Force for one Jedi both of them had an extremely strong connection to, Ahsoka. If she could feel their presence in the Force, and if she had survived, perhaps she could find them. Ahsoka stood in front of the Crash Republic Star Destroyer, where so many clones had just died. She stood alone with Rex and was about to put her lightsabers down for good when she felt something in the Force. It was recognizable. Anakin. For the first time in a while, Ahsoka had even a small bit of hope, and she knew where Anakin was from a mission report with Obi-Wan a while ago. Kato Nemoidia with Master Plo. Ahsoka got into a ship large enough to carry her, Rex, Anakin, and Plo, if she could find them. Anakin and Plo waited overnight for anything, 
their ships were ruined, and there was nothing around them. R2 was with them as well, but sending any sort of signal from here would have the enemy coming at them with full force. The clone troopers weren't coming near them right now, as they must have been presumed dead. And late in the night, Anakin felt Ahsoka's presence arrive on the planet. The call through the force worked. Now, Anakin instructed R2 to send a distress signal out. Plo said that this would be risky, as the clones would also receive this signal. But Anakin said it was their only hope, and Plo knew it to be true. R2 sent out the signal, and now they wait. Ahsoka and Rex flew quietly through the city, past buildings, past mountains. They weren't sure where to look, but Rex called to Ahsoka and said they were receiving a faint distress signal from the standalone mountain in the distance. Ahsoka took off for it, and across from them, she could see five clone fighters going to the same place. Looks like they weren't the only ones that received the distress call. Anakin and Plo stood on the clearing and ignited their lightsabers. They would have to fight, but right as the five clone fighters got into firing range, two of them exploded as they were ambushed. Ahsoka! Anakin knew it was her. Ahsoka felt bad for shooting down the clones, but she had to save Anakin and Plo. While the three other fighters were distracted, Anakin threw his lightsaber in the air, cutting the wing of one of them. Plo used the force then to alter the flight path of another, causing it to crash into the final fighter. Ahsoka flew down and picked up the Jedi, giving them both a hug as they reluctantly approached Rex. Ahsoka and Rex explained everything, how the chips inside the clones' heads were programmed for this, and Anakin asked who gave the order. Rex confirmed Anakin's suspicions. The order came from the Chancellor's office. Anakin said that they have work to do. They must get back to Coruscant and end this. They took off, and once in space, Plo Koon entered the Jedi distress code when eventually Bail Organa answered. Bail told them that he would meet them at a set of coordinates in space. Then he revealed that he was with Masters Yoda, Windu, and Kenobi. Windu and Kenobi had been together on Utapau, and they'd both survived with Yoda. Eventually, the surviving Jedi reunited aboard the Tantive Four, where they went over what happened. Yoda, Windu, Plo, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Anakin were an extremely formidable group, and Bail Organa told them that Palpatine had recently declared himself as the Emperor of the New Galactic Empire. And soon, they flew back to Coruscant to fight Palpatine. They could only assume one thing from all of this. Palpatine was Darth Sidious. And Darth Sidious stood inside of his office, going over his art pieces that he'd kept in here for so long. He gave himself to the Force, feeling the darkness surround him, and he thought about his plans as Emperor. Anakin was dead or missing, but he would find a new apprentice soon, one perhaps more powerful, trained from birth in the dark side. And then Palpatine looked over to his desk, where Padme Amidala sat, unconscious and handcuffed. She was framed by him for playing a role in the Jedi trying to take over, and it was Palpatine putting things into place so that her child could become his future apprentice. But in the distance, Palpatine began to hear the sounds of screaming from clones and lightsabers, a concerning amount of lightsabers. Could this somehow be Anakin? Did he survive? Palpatine got back behind his desk and quickly realized it was Anakin, but more than just him. Some of the greatest Jedi in the entire Order. Somehow, they'd all survived. But as Anakin walked in with the Jedi, he felt horror as he saw Padme unconscious. Palpatine let out a loud, menacing laugh as he ignited his red lightsaber right above her head. Palpatine told the Jedi that they had lost. It was over. This was his new empire. And he told Anakin that he must now make a choice. Join him in the dark side of the Force, become his apprentice, help him kill these Jedi, save his wife, or watch his wife and future child die, here and now. Anakin knew what he must do. He had one choice. So Anakin discreetly tapped a button on his comlink and began to walk towards Palpatine. The Sith Lord had a smile on his face as Anakin walked towards him, saying he would do what he must. Palpatine said Anakin will become a strong Sith, but then everything changed. In a split second, Anakin grabbed Padme with the Force, pulling her quickly to the Jedi behind him. Palpatine swung to kill her, but was stopped as his office window exploded and the room was filled with firepower from a ship outside. 
Anakin had contacted Rex to fire upon the office window, and the plan worked. Padme was safe with the Jedi, and Palpatine was thrown across the room. As the Sith Lord, injured, turned around and looked up, all of the Jedi had their lightsabers in his face. He was beyond furious that Anakin would not join him, and Palpatine put his hands into a claw form and fired extremely strong lightning at the Jedi. But their combined forces were far too strong, and the strongest Jedi in the Order worked together to deflect the lightning back at Sidious, disintegrating him completely. The Jedi would go to eventually to the Senate with Captain Rex, and he would explain that Palpatine tricked the Republic, tricked the Jedi and the clones into doing exactly what he'd wanted. Rex explained that the clones were programmed to execute the Jedi, and they actually did nothing wrong. And eventually the Republic united over the fact that they were extremely corrupt. Mon Mothma stepped in as Chancellor to rebuild this broken system, and the broken but still alive Jedi Order would move to Ahch 2 and begin to rebuild. Plo Koon convinced Ahsoka to return, and the Jedi would find survivors over time. Anakin would leave the Order to be with his wife, as she gave birth to twins Luke and Leia. And Anakin would often wonder what would have happened if he never went to help Plo Koon. Would he have fallen to the dark side? Would he and Padme still be together? All that mattered in the end was that they survived, and together, they were happy. And folks, that is where our story ends today. I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Please do leave a like, it really helps out quite a lot. So, appreciate that. Thanks a ton, and I'll see you in the next video.